Everybody, great. Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to the Attorney General's office. Um, I want to begin uh, by acknowledging uh, the people that are with me today and, and those that are not as we provide an update on our investigation into the alleged illegal disposal of solid waste at the Route 610 construction project in the City of Providence. Um, I want to in particular, in particular commend Sergeant Shayla Paquette of the DEM um, who uh, really led uh, this investigation uh, from the state's perspective. Of course, my old uh, colleague and friend, uh, Chief Dean Hoxie, who I've known for a very, very long time. I also want to acknowledge the people in this office that have worked so hard on this case. They include the Criminal Chief Steve Damper, but more particularly uh, John Marrera um, and uh, Pete Rockland. Pete's here standing behind me and uh, Allison Hoffman from our Civil Division who has played a role as well as we have investigated this matter. I also want to thank our federal uh, colleagues, uh, Zach Cunha and his team. We worked together uh, with the U.S. Attorney's Office on this matter uh, from the beginning. As you know, their matter has been resolved, um, but ours uh, has not. Uh, but that is consistent uh, with what we do, frankly, on a regular basis. Um, I can count to a number of matters over, over my federal and state um, career where the U.S. Attorney's Office and this office uh, have worked together on joint investigations and sometimes uh, those investigations lead to a global resolution and sometimes they do not. Sometimes they lead to federal charges, sometimes they lead to state charges, sometimes they lead to both, uh, which is what uh, has occurred here. So I want to thank attorney, uh, U.S. Attorney Cunha and his team, as well as the Department of Labor Office of Inspector General and the De uh, Department of Transportation Office of, in of Inspector General for our collective work on this case, which developed the evidence which has led uh, to today. So this morning, uh, this office filed a four-count criminal information charging Barletta Heavy Division of, Can of Canton, Massachusetts, and former Barletta senior employee Dennis Ferreira with violations of Rhode Island solid waste laws. Barletta Heavy Division is the primary contractor on the Route 610 construction project. Mr. Ferreira was a senior Barletta employee and until the state and federal investigation of this matter, was the superintendent of the 610 construction project. As alleged in the information, Mr. Ferreira possessed broad authority over the 610 construction project. He was the highest ranking Barletta employee on the site. As superintendent, he managed daily field operations and was responsible for executing the project work plan. His areas of authority included the acquisition of material to be used on the site. The Route 610 construction project is a $247 million highway reconstruction project that has required, among other things, the replacement of or removal of nine structurally deficient bridges. As any Rhode Islander knows who's been through that area over the past several years, the 610 construction project has involved a significant amount of construction and movement of soil. As alleged in the information, the conditions under which Barletta was authorized by DEM to undertake this construction project were written and well-defined. Among those written conditions was a requirement that any fill, soil, brought to the 610 construction site be analyzed for contaminants, be certified as meeting certain environmental and public health criteria with respect to hazardous substances, and be suitable for use at the site. Work began on the Route 610 construction site in January of 2018. The Pawtucket Central Falls Commuter Rail Station project is a $35 million construction project that is now complete in the city of Pawtucket near the Central Falls line. In October of 2018, the state of Rhode Island awarded the contract for this project to Barletta Heavy Division. As alleged in the information, it was well recognized at the time that the contract was awarded to Barletta that, that in the contract that was awarded to Barletta, that, that contaminated soil was present at the commuter rail station site due to, the, due to the historical uses of the site going back decades. The property had been used as a rail yard for almost 150 years. Chemicals typically in the soil at rail yards include arsenic used as a herbicide and contaminants from buried coal ash and from the weathering of creosote preserved uh, rail ties. <clears throat> After a site inspection and analysis, Barletta's own environmental consultant reported to DEM that due to the presence of soil contaminants, the entire site was contaminated. Accordingly, the state's contract with Barletta required the company to deal with soil 
at the commuter rail station site in only two ways. Number one, it could reuse it at the same site with state oversight to ensure no public health or environmental harm, or it could dispose of the material at an appropriately licensed disposal facility. Now this is important for this case. The Route 610 construction site is not a licensed disposal facility. As alleged in the information, the Route 610 construction project required a large use, a large a use of large amounts of gravel. Gravel is comprised of a mixture of stone and soil. Prior to July of 2020, Barletta was purchasing stone from a supplier that DOT had approved as providing materials suitable for use at the project. Under the contract, if Barletta changed the source of the stone, it needed a document to the state that the stone met the environmental criteria required for the project. As alleged in the information during the summer of 2020, Mr. Ferreira changed the sources of stone and soil for the 610 construction project. As alleged in the information, he did not find new sources of stone and soil that met the public health and environmental criteria for the site. Instead, as alleged in the information, he brought contaminated soil and stone to the site, material that constitutes solid waste under Rhode Island law, by the truckload. And once it was there, at his direction, Barletta mixed it together with other materials and used it on site. As alleged in the information, Mr. Ferreira committed these violations of Rhode Island law on behalf of Barletta Heavy Division without telling DOT or DEM what he was doing and in violation of the contractual provisions designed to protect public health and the environment. And then, as alleged in the information, he lied to cover it up. At the time that Barletta was working on the 610 construction project and the Pawtucket Central Falls Commuter Rail Project in Rhode Island, it was also working on several construction projects in Massachusetts, including rail bed replacement on the MBTA's B and C green lines. That work was generating waste stone, which Barletta was stockpiling in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. Barletta could not move that stone off the Jamaica Plain site without having it tested for contaminants. As alleged in the information in the summer of 2020, Mr. Ferreira, at a meeting with other Barletta employees in Massachusetts, was told that Barletta was running out of room to stockpile the untested stone in Jamaica Plain. As I said, that stone had not been tested for contaminants. As alleged in the information, Mr. Ferreira stated that he could use soil and stone at the Route 610 construction project and have it taken by Barletta to the 610 site. As alleged in the information, in July of 2020, Barletta transported the MBTA stone, at that point untested for contaminants, from Jamaica Plain to the 610 construction site. As alleged in the information, he did so, Barletta did so, in no small amounts. A total of 93 truckloads was sent from Massachusetts to the 610 site over 15 days in July of 2020. As alleged in the information, the amount of Massachusetts stone trucked to Rhode Island by Barletta at Mr. Ferreira's direction totaled approximately 3,460 tons, or approximately 2,604 cubic yards. At Mr. Ferreira's direction, Barletta mixed the Massachusetts stone with soil at the 610 uh, site to produce gravel, which was then used throughout the 610 site. As alleged in the information, Rhode Island DOT officials and workers on the site did not know that the stone arriving at the 610 site was from Massachusetts, because Mr. Ferreira never notified DOT or DEM that he had changed the source of supply, notwithstanding that the contract required Barletta to do so and certify that the material met acceptable environmental standards. Nevertheless, as alleged in the information, DOT officials and workers on the site soon noticed that the stone arriving at the 610 site was different from what had been delivered previously. A DOT official noticed railroad ties and spikes in the material. A worker on the site reported the presence of railroad spikes, railroad plates, rings and links in the material. And as alleged in the information, DEM received a complaint that railroad stone and soil mixed with oil and or tar was being brought from Massachusetts and being mixed with the soil at the 610 site. 
In late July of 2020, DOT confronted Mr. Ferrer about the source of the stone that had arrived at the 610 construction site during July. As alleged in the information, Mr. Ferrer admitted that he changed the source from the stone, of the stone. From, uh, he admitted they, that he had changed the source for the stone from the DEM and DOT approved source to a Massachusetts MBTA site. RIDOT asked for environmental certification for the new source of the stone that the contract required. As alleged in the information, Mr. Ferreira knew that the stone from the Massachusetts Jamaica Plain stockpile that he had transported to the 610 site had not been tested. As alleged in the information, and in an, in an attempt to cover up what he had done, he provided state officials with an environmental testing report for stone not from the Jamaica Plain site, but from another MBTA site at Orion Heights, Massachusetts. That stone met the standard for use at the 610 site, but that was not the stone that Mr. Ferreira had transported on behalf of Barletta from Massachusetts to the 610 site. As alleged in the, in the information, to make matters worse, when the test results did come in from the Jamaica Plain Stone, for the Jamaica Plain Stone, 93 truckloads of which had been trucked by Barletta to the 610 site, and show that the contaminants in that stone exceeded the public health and environmental standards that Barletta was obligated to comply with at the 610 site, either Mr. Ferreira nor anyone else at Barletta advised DOT of the fact. That notification came two months later from counsel for Barletta. Furthermore, as alleged in the information, Barletta continued to mix the contaminated Massachusetts stone with soil at the 610 construction site and use it on that site. As alleged in the information, not the, notwithstanding that Barletta was barred from doing so under its contract with the state of Rhode Island, Mr. Ferrer also, on Barletta's behalf, transported contaminated soil from the Pawtucket Central Falls commuter rail site to the 610 site during the summer of 2020. As alleged in the information, Barletta's contract with the state required that any soil from the commuter rail station site be reused on site or moved off site only to a licensed disposal facility because of contaminants in that soil. Again, the 610 construction site is not a licensed waste, solid waste disposal facility. Nevertheless, as alleged in the information, over four days in July of 2020, in Mr. Ferreira's direction, 52 truckloads, 52 truckloads of contaminated soil were trucked from the commuter rail station site to the 610 construction site. The amount of contaminated material amounted to approximately 1,114 tons of soil, or approximately 860 cubic yards. As alleged in the information, some of this contaminated material was dumped directly in the area of the Toby Street overpass. The rest was delivered to, parts of the six, to the part of the 610 site where stone was being mixed with soil to produce gravel. As alleged in the information, when DOT con confronted Mr. Ferrer about his removal of the contaminated soil from the train station site to the 610 site, Mr. Ferrer responded, I can do anything I want with this soil. When confronted again by uh, Rhode Island DOT, Mr. Ferrer falsely stated that only topsoil had been removed from the train station site to the 610 site to be screened. As alleged in the information, after being confronted by state officials, Barletta obtained authorization to remove 150 tons of soil from the 610 site to the state landfill. Barletta then brought six truckloads, approximately 130 tons of soil, to the state landfill. Barletta told Rhode Island DOT officials that with this removal, none of the contaminated soil from the train station remained on the 610 site. As alleged in the information, this, representa this representation was knowingly false. Far more contaminated soil from the train station site remained on and was used at the 610 site. As alleged in the information, the state's environmental experts have concluded that both the Jamaica Plain Stone and the train station soil brought by Mr. Ferreira and Barletta to the 610 site constitute solid waste as that term is defined under Rhode Island's environmental protection laws. And again, I want to emphasize this point. As alleged in the information, the 610 site is not a licensed solid waste disposal facility. Accordingly, today, this office has charged Mr. Ferreira 
and Barletta Heavy Division with several violations of the state's environmental laws. Disposing of more than three cubic yards of solid waste at an unlicensed management facility and operating an unlicensed solid waste management facility. And based on the allegation and the information that Mr. Ferreira, on behalf of Barletta, provided false testing results for the Jamaica Plain Stone to state officials, Barletta and Mr. Ferreira are also charged with filing a false document with a public official. In the end, it comes down to this. As alleged in the information, Mr. Ferreira and Mr. and Barletta Heavy Division used the 610 site as an environmental dumping ground, not only for Rhode Island waste. Worse, they made Rhode Island a dumping ground for Massachusetts waste. They engaged in such conduct, presumably to save money, at the expense of public health and the environment. Rhode Island's environmental and public health laws exist for a reason, to keep Rhode Islanders safe and to protect our environment. And we will continue to aggressively enforce those laws because Rhode Islanders deserve nothing less. Uh, and so with that, I'll take questions if there are any. General, a couple of questions. Um, don't see any financial penalties here. Obviously, you said to save money at the expense of public health and the environment. Um, obviously, this costs a lot to taxpayers. Uh, what's the, what's the yeah. financial implications? Well, the financial Im implications cater to these, that if convicted, it's a $25,000 fine for every day that the waste was on site. So we're a long way from resolution of this case, obviously, but if convicted, the company and Mr. Ferreira face significant financial penalties. But we're not there yet. They're presumed innocent as we stand here today. But that is a component of the penalty provision of the charges we brought today. Um, second question. Um, the timeline that you have delineated, uh, these environmental transgressions were brought to the attention of DEM and DOT repeatedly by a whistleblower, James White, prior to any of this happening, including reports by the press. <clears throat> DOT was not proactive in this. How is DOT not responsible for this? Director Peter Alvidi repeatedly lied that there was no contamination. We have the emails, the statements that he said on air. How, how is DOT not held responsible? Yeah, so what we do in this office, Kate, is we bring criminal charges against people who are criminally responsible. So if you have issues with state officials, then you can take it up with them if they haven't been, in your mind, forthcoming with you. But that's not, it's not a crime to lie to the press, but it is a crime to file a false document with a public official, and that's a charge we brought today. Lying to the press should LVD step down? Look, that's not my call. That's not my call. And whether he lied to you or not, in your opinion, is up for you to decide. It's not for me to comment on. All right, back in the back, yes. Yeah, hi, um, two questions. Um, is the bar of the trucker? Did they operate the trucks? I believe that they contracted with someone to operate the trucks. Okay, so the people who, who operated the trucks, do they see any liability at all? What, what we have to prove in this case yeah. is, who, um, is who had the intent to move contaminated material from one place to another, okay? okay? And so that's why we have charged Mr. Ferreira, who is responsible, in our mind, is alleging the information for the scheme, and through him, Barletta is also charged as being responsible for his conduct under the law. Uh, what are the potential health consequences for people who live around this? Uh, I'm, so I'm sorry. What Say are again, the potential Brian? health consequences for yeah, people who live Yeah, so, so there, it's, a, it's a great question. And so one of the questions we've been asking is, you know, how do you, knowing that, um, as we allege, that contaminants remain on the site, is it better for public health to remove the remainder of those contaminants, which have been mixed throughout the site, uh, or to leave them there in, in effectively a cap state. And so, you know, from talking to the environmental experts here, um, uh, the, the consensus is, is that to try to dig up and remove those materials at this point would, po would pose more of a threat to public health than simply leaving them there. Um, but what concerns me, of course, is, um, is, you know, what happens when work needs to be done on that site down the road. Um, there are certainly going to have to be steps in place to address the contamination then. Uh, but that's, you know, that's less of an issue for, our, for the cases, for the cases we brought today, the charges we brought today. You know, we have brought these charges and we are going to attempt to prove uh, in court that uh, Mr. Ferrer and this company committed the violations, criminal violations that we have brought today. Yes? Um, on cost, what would it have cost um, him to dispose of all that contaminated soil properly? What would be the tipping yeah. fee? I don't, I don't have the answer to that. So he, he, he evaded paying a, a fair amount of money, I would guess, by not paying tipping fees to properly 
get rid of this contaminated soil? Yeah, well, whether it's tipping fees or something else. So, for example, as I said earlier, um, as we allege in the, in the information, just taking the commuter rail station, there were two choices for the use of that soil. You keep it there and cap it, or take it to a licensed disposal facility. By not doing that, presumably you save money. But I can't tell you what, what money, the, sure. uh, the amount of money that was saved. Does this prosecution preclude civil case from local residents who might want to bring something down the road? You know, that's a question really for uh, lawyers who represent individuals. Of course, we represent the state, yes. both in the civil and criminal context. Um, you know, and I, and I want to point out too, that, you know, the scope of this investigation and this investigation continues. So, um, you know, we're bringing charges today against the people that we can, we believe we can prove uh, are responsible today. Again, they are entitled to the presumption of innocence. We have a job to do from this part going forward. Um, but there are, you know, potential remedies, both civil and criminal, uh, in addition to what we're bringing today, that are on the table for us as well, Steve. And is Barletta um, responsible for any other fill projects in Rhode Island uh, previous to this that might come under investigation? Yeah, look, I, I can't answer that, Steve, as okay. I stand here today. Thank you. Are there any immediate remediation projects? I don't know if Dan could address this. You said it's <coughs> better to leave it there cap rather than try to remove it. Is there anything that's going to be done to address the contamination? My project? understanding, uh, Brian, is that um, is that uh, there are no planned remediation efforts right now because the consensus is that to do anything would require digging something up. And that's one of the issues when you transport materials from one place to another, obviously that, that material can get into the air. So it's, it's, the, it's the transporting and the mixing and the movement, which is what you know, concerned environmental officials and others, uh, workers and others at the site. Should people who live around there or who are driving over there be concerned about their exposure as it stands right now? Yeah, my understanding is the answer to that is no. Other questions? All right. Well, with that, thank you very much. Thank you all. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Good to see you up here.